Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the 10 Second Gems Podcast. Guys, I know that I've been uh, been a little bit slow with the episodes. As you know, uh, I teach during the day and I'm a photographer and this is a uh, busy season for photography. Um, if you ever are looking for a photographer, I travel, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, my website is www.victorphotog. That's Victor, V-I-C-T-O-R-P-H-O-T-O-G.com. All of my information, how you can get in touch with me is all there uh, on the website. I'm trying some visuals today for YouTube. Not sure if it's going to work. Uh, but hell, I want to start adding the visuals. So hopefully uh, everything will work. My camera batteries are going to last. Uh, <laughs> so listen, uh, let's just jump right into this. Uh, everybody knows about the Will Smith slash uh, Chris Rock thing that happened, right? And I had done a short. I had done like a quick short 20 minute episode the day after. Um, I actually didn't see a catch wind of it till like maybe... Man, it was probably 12 o'clock the next day after it happened. And, uh, you know, my students were telling me about it. I was kind of seeing stuff on social media about it. But um, first of all, I thought it was fake. That's number one. Number two, um, I was seeing a lot of memes, um, like a couple memes here and in between classes sometimes. I, You know, whatever, while I'm waiting on kids or whatever. And um, somebody had texted me a meme and was like, yo, have you seen this? And I was like, yeah, what was that all about? So anyway, um, once I sat down with one of the stu my students and he was breaking it down to me, um, I went and I watched it during my lunch. And I was shocked. Number one, I think most people were shocked, right? Um, throughout the day, the more as the day progressed the more I knew about it, the more I was just, it was sitting with me, you know, I was just trying to process it. And, um, one of the kids at the end of the day was like, Hey, did you see, uh, did you see Will Smith smack the ish out of, out of Chris Rock, this and that. And I'm like, yeah, I saw it. And you know, he was like, I guess expecting me to like laugh with him or be like, yeah, ha ha, damn, he smacked this, whatever. But my reaction was just like, I mean, if that was real, that wasn't cool, bro. And my students like, yeah, but blah, blah. I'm like, nah, listen, bro, I got, I got to be honest with you. It wasn't cool. You know what I mean? So we started talking about it. And I think I was, he, I kind of, he kind of, I call him off guard. I think he was expecting me to like, think it was funny. You know what I mean? And um, I was just explaining to him like that the memes like, I'm like, bro, I've, I've only been looking at this thing off and on, hearing about it off and on for a few hours, and and I've already seen people showing me memes, but it's not funny. And he's like, well, I mean, it's funny. And I'm like, well, it's not funny, right? Because what happens if Chris Rock goes home that night and, God forbid, kills himself over this? I'm like, you got to understand, this is something that's going to live with this man for the rest of his life. And he got kids. Now his kids got to see this for the rest of their lives. And he was just kind of like, damn, I guess I ain't think about it like that. And I'm like, well, imagine you got hundreds of millions of people all over the world watching this happen to you. And you grew up being bullied. And now here you are being bullied in front of a couple hundred million people. You know what I mean? Like, think about that. So anyway, I came home that night or that day and um, was kind of scrolling through uh, social media before I, I, I started editing some pictures. And I was just like, damn, why? Like this this shit is not funny. Like it's not funny. Um, and and uh, I don't know, the memes just kind of put me through this, this pace in my mind. Like why is, like if these are grown men posting these memes, like, yo, y'all got to grow the hell up, man. Y'all got to grow up. Seriously. Um, I'm constantly telling my students. I'm try always trying to tell them, like, it's not cool to be in a, in a school building recording fights. Like, you recording somebody with your phone getting beat up in the hallway. I'm always telling them, like, that's not cool, bro. Like, you got to understand. That person got to live with that for the rest of their life. You know what I mean? And then I see stuff like this and I'm just like, 
there's a lot of grown men out here encouraging that behavior and, and reposting the memes or making their own memes and posting them and grown grown men and women and um i just want to challenge adults today here's a gem for you adults we can't expect our youth now to to act a certain way or to do what's right to 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 um do the right thing to be courteous to be nice to other people to be respectful if we as adults can't even be respectful you don't think teenagers are watching us watching us how we talk how we move but see a lot of people expect they have all these expectations on young people but you gotta they looking at us they looking at us for that that guidance you know what i mean you know you know it's funny to me um i heard somebody say this uh a while back probably 10 years ago and it, and it, and i think more than ever now it stands true that when i was a kid i wanted to be like the older guys the older guys wasn't trying to be like uh like me like a kid and i feel like now a lot of grown ass men they more concerned with trying to be young like the like kids ain't looking up to a lot of adults wanting to be like us it's like the it's like the roads are reversed like the adults want to be like the kids like all you got to do is look on social media look on social media bro grown ass men and women acting like children grown ass men and women posting they 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 relationship drama as if they were eighth graders or ninth graders i got some high school kids with more sense than some of my adult family members <laughs> you know what i mean like but it takes me it was um you know i'm like trying to tie this back in because i wanted to talk about the jada i mean the, the jada and will smith situation the chris rock situation but i wanted to do it in a way where i wasn't necessarily judging um i have my theories I have a lot of ideas about that whole thing. Um, everybody has formulated their own ideas. Every podcast on the planet has talked about it. But I was trying to figure out how can I talk about this in such a way where it could be tied into a gem or some gems or or just just a way to challenge uh, adults and even young people that listen to the podcast uh, to challenge you guys to think about the repercussions of of um being a bad example to others right so like like i'm telling you with this young man in my classroom um i could have very easily like laughed about it with him made jokes about it with him you know what i mean like just to, if nothing else for him to, for me and him to have a moment where we're being cool a teacher and a student are are being cool with each other but it was just more important to me to just drive that point home to him like bro that that wasn't cool and here's why and uh actually like uh, a couple days say like four or five days after after the fact um i actually had so I, uh, me and my, uh, my classroom sometimes the, the kids circle up and we talk for a few minutes before they get to work and we just circled up and i was just like look this is the perfect example of what i'm constantly telling y'all you know with like people recording fights and then posting them all over the internet and and social media and all that so we had a really dope conversation just with teenagers about that and um and the realization watching them uh speak on the will smith j uh, uh chris rock thing and watching them relate that back to high school and the fights and all that and how some of them literally were like mr o to be honest with you man it's like I never really, I never really considered it till I saw this thing with Jay, um, with with uh, Will Smith and and what you call it. So it was just cool to have that conversation and hear students be like, "Damn, bro, you always be talking about how the hallway stuff." So I'm like, exactly, like you basically putting it out there to the world. You know, a hundred million people could see a video of somebody getting beat up in the hallway. Or what if that was your brother? What if that was your cousin, your sister? You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, so I wanted to start there, and and then um, I also been having uh, we been having conversations at work with a bunch of teachers, and we just had this big meeting the other day. And um, if you're a new teacher, or if you're a teacher, period, 
and you're listening to this podcast, um, especially if you're a new teacher like guys, we as teachers, we got to learn how to be open with our students and parents. I guess you could tie this back to your to your to your to your um, teenagers if you have them or your children. It's like I'm always t- I'm always uh, this is my mindset. Like young people now. You've heard me say this on the podcast before. It's like they have a whole nother set of challenges than than what we had. You know what I mean? Like it's just different. We could run from our bullies. A lot of the times these kids can't, right? They can't run from their bullies. Um, And yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking about all that. And then I'm talking to teachers and we had this meeting. And in the meeting, I'm trying to explain to these teachers like... We got to build relationships with our students Um, because if they don't, if students, if young people don't trust you or if people in general, let's just talk people in general, if people in general don't trust you, the chances that they're going to be open to learn something from you are slim to none. You know what I mean? Slim to none. When I started teaching nine years ago, I had my attitude on day one was like, well, I'm not going in there to be nobody friend. I'm going in there to teach a skill so these kids can go make money. And after a week, I realized, nah, I'm not being myself. Like I was trying to fit this mold. Like there's this stigma with teachers, right? Like teachers got to be a certain way and, and that's that. So I can't, I ended up coming in with this mindset after about a week and a half of this, where I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just be me. And be as open as I can with them without crossing any lines, right? You want to make sure you're being appropriate. But um, yeah, I want to challenge new teachers, man, that if you out there, you gotta you gotta figure you gotta figure out a way to put yourself in your student's shoes so that you're able to better serve them, you're able to better understand them, and you earn their trust and their respect. Once you earn that trust and respect, I feel like everything else it's just going to go smooth. You know what I mean? Hold on a second. I lost my music here. Yeah. I got to have my music, man. I got to have my music. This is this new thing. So I, this is a new beat I made a while back, uh, a couple weeks ago for a client, for a friend of mine who's a client. And uh, I don't know, I just really love this beat. So I thought instead of the normal beat that I would put this on in the background. But anyway, damn, what was I even talking about? Yeah, so new teachers, man, like um, be transparent with your students. Parents, be transparent with your your teenagers. Because like for us, for me growing up at least, I always felt like it was like the like the black and puerto rican kids versus the white teachers that's how i used to feel about it anyway and then it went from that to us versus each other and now it's this whole thing of to me with teenagers is like it's just them against us and that's flat out it you know what I mean? So a lot of times these kids come in to into a situation, into a classroom situation already defensive. You know what I mean? They don't want you to trust them. They don't want to trust you. They just want to be able to say, F that dude. I don't like that teacher. He's this, he's that. And be able to move on without any sort of a conscience. Because they they're expected not to like you. We're expecting not to like them. It's supposed to be this hate, hate thing or this, you know what I mean? Like, so one thing I've been able to do with my students is just knock down a lot of walls and um, and barriers by just being myself and being honest. And sometimes saying, guys, I, I'm not having a great day. So let's just keep the volume down. You know what I mean? Like even stuff like that, because a lot of, a lot of students tell me that they feel like the teacher's put out this vibe like they're better than than the students and that's one thing that i've always tried not to do like i don't want people to i'm first of all i don't like people thinking like i don't like giving that vibe off that i'm better than somebody anyway but um 
yeah that's a big thing with teenagers man so new teachers if you're out there if you're listening if you're an old teacher if you're a teacher looking for some new ways to to break ground with your students start by being being um an open book i mean there's a thin line there obviously there's you can't tell your students everything um when i was growing up um my uh titi lydia right my aunt lydia she's actually my mother's aunt but um titi lydia was a uh, a teacher elementary school and uh she would have students over her house uh she would drop students off at home she would feed students you know it was always like uh there were plenty instances where she would have students at her house like for family events things like that and i always i would that always tripped me out like yo that's crazy that the dt like you know has this relationship with her students so of course when when i got this job like a couple months in i was talking to her about all this and i was just saying you know i, I remember you always having um students at your house and how did that work and this and that and um she just kept relating she kept relating it back to love and she was just like, you know, a lot of my students to this day, they see me in the street and they run up to me. They they pick me up hugging me, you know, like some they cry when they see you in the street and blah, blah, because you you showed them love, you know. And, and it's not that they're bad kids is that people got to understand they're going through a lot uh, last year after the like when the pandemic started slowing down and they well slowing down but and they started letting they open the school back up they ended up finding two students that were living in the building like for a couple days somehow they found them like really really early in the morning before the building even technically opened and um you know it's like we we forget that some of these kids are going through a lot at home. Some of them are, are being parents to their siblings. They don't hardly see their parents because his parents are working or or not working. They're just not there. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's just a sensitivity thing, man. So for teachers that are out there trying to figure out how to better break ground with their students, it starts there, man. Um, I got this thing in my classroom, fist bump. You, can, you don't leave my room, you don't enter my room without a fist bump. I don't care if I'm busy. I put everything down, I walk over, fist bump. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I'm having a bad day, uh, the students will be like, yo, what's up? Like, they'll come over like, yo, you forget something? I'm like, ah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, to me, that's just like a way to connect with them without crossing that line, obviously. Um, I'm not really... Uh, a uh, supporter of necessarily hugging on students and all that you know what I mean so my way is and I don't really like the high five day so my thing is just the fist bump but that's another way to just kind of break break the ice a little bit with students every it doesn't work with everybody you know I'm sure I got I'm sure there's a lot of kids in that building that probably can't stand me but uh, for the most part I have favor with a lot of my students and it starts with just that transparency of being like look man I'm 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 not the best teacher in the world. I'm a forgetful person. I forget things. I need y'all to keep me accountable. And there ain't a lot of adults willing to open that door to young people to say, listen, I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. Call me out. And that's another thing I do with my students. I tell them like, you know, every once in a while, I'm like, hey, guys, you know, there's a little survey. We got this thing called Schoology. They log in. It's like Facebook, but for school. And I'm like, yo, the, 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 the monthly checkup surveys and then they know what that means. That means that once a month I put like three or four questions in a survey and it's completely anonymous and it's all about me. Like, guys, how am I doing? What can I be doing differently? And, and this is something they take this survey. They take it, you know, probably not every month, but every few months I'll put that. I'll put a survey with different questions like that. And I always tell them, I'm like, guys, listen, you decide you're the you're the ones that decide whether I'm a good teacher or not. Like nobody downtown could tell me whether I'm a good teacher or not. You tell me that, you know what I mean? So in order for me to get better at my job and for me to better help you and serve you, I need you to be honest with me. And I'll tell them if if we're in here working and, and you ask me a question and you feel like I got snippy with you 
don't don't bite back here's what i want you to do when the bell ring get up let everybody leave and then pull me aside and be like hey man i feel like you disrespected me and then i'm gonna ask you okay why do you feel that way and we can have a conversation about it and whether i feel that i'm correct or not i'm gonna apologize to you but it's up to you to come pull me aside and be like hey man you know you kind of was a little funky with you the way you spoke to me dude that works listen that works wonders it works wonders wonders with young people man because there ain't a lot of adults willing to and it's not you not coming down to their level you bringing them up and you're and you're you're not just bringing them up but you're lifting them up like you see what i'm saying like that's a double meaning there like you making them feel like wow i can this person cares enough to ask me my opinion on this because guess what the other side of it is is that right now the way the system is set up you got a group of people that don't really want the kids opinion and then you got a group of people that demand that the kids have an opinion i'm not going to break that down but just let that one let that one simmer right so like a lot of the times teachers are trying to instill realistic things with students but then the system has it set up where that's not the case i can't really i I wish i could expand on that but um i'm not going to expand on that because it's tricky and uh, i would have to expose some things that i see in the school system that really i don't want to get into all that so (laughs) we'll save that for another day we'll save that for when i have 10 million viewers and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but, you know, anyway. But listen, uh, what, what, what were we talking about? Yeah, just be transparent with your students or your teenagers, man. That's all they want. They just want, they want some sort of, they want respect. And some of them, some of them are willing to earn that respect. But us, we got to put this pride down of, oh, well, I'm the adult and you're the buck. Nah. That wall, that wall, that wall will go up in 10 seconds, less, less than 10 seconds. And it'll stay up there. Right. So at first I used to be like that, like, man, listen, you know, I'm this, I'm that. I'm going to be to this. I'm going to be to that. And after a week, I was like, nah, I'm going to come in here and be myself, man. And once I started doing that, I started seeing the changes in the students. But um, yeah, man, uh, back to this Will and Jada thing, too. I'm explaining to, I was explaining actually to a female the other day, female friend of mine, uh, an ex-student. We were talking about this thing again, right? And I was just saying like, look, this is a perfect example of what it is to be in a relationship with somebody that possibly doesn't love you. (laughs) Ooh. I mean, if you look at that whole situation, she... She has been belittling that dude and putting their family secret out on the street for a long time. So I think my man just snapped, bro. I think he snapped. I don't know that you should just be walking up on stage. Like, like, uh, you know, a lot of comedians are pissed off about this. And a lot of comedians are basically going at Will Smith every chance they get because of this. Because it's like he also opened a door for people to basically walk up on stage at like a comedy club and just smack a comedian because they don't like a joke. You already know that that the woke community has been attacking comedy for years now. So now you're giving people a license to go act silly. And again, this is what I'm telling my students. I'm like, remember how I talked to y'all about getting a ball rolling and all of a sudden, oh, hold on, hold on, I need my music back. This is a raw episode of <laughs> 10 Second Gems. But hey, man, hopefully hopefully y'all appreciate that. Everything ain't always got to be perfect, right? I'm trying out some new stuff. And y'all are my, y'all are my, um, my uh, focus group. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, like I was saying, what, what was it? What were you saying, bro? What were you saying? I'm talking to myself here. Um, I was talking about, oh, yeah, yeah, the snowball effect. So I was just talking about how like 
your actions i'm telling the students i'm like your actions could lead to a whole nother world of of mess like you tip over one cup and that water starts to spread on the desk and little by little it consumes where it abs it's absorbed the paper it absorbs into papers and notebooks and whatever's on the desk right but that's just from one action so my man smacks chris rock and now even more of his family dirt is coming out <clears throat> it's coming out that this dude's daughter wrote a a letter to tupac this little girl wasn't even alive when Tupac was alive she don't know who this dude is the mom is making up to me I think to me I think Jada Smith is Jada Pinkett Smith is making up stories about her relationship with Tupac because I don't know either that or she gassed her daughter up or something but anyway what was I, I was talking about um somebody that doesn't love you right so I don't know I don't feel I feel like I started saying I didn't want to talk about this in a critical, in a criticizing way, but I was telling the student, I'm like, look, when you got people that don't, like, they're supposed to love you and they don't, this is the behavior. Because all these people came out like, oh, this is protecting black, I mean, black women, this and that. That's what, that, that's what came out, which great. I'm all for that. But then she comes out and says, I wish that Will wouldn't have smacked Chris because I'm not a woman that need defending. So she ain't even stand by her man, even when he jumped up out of his seat to basically defend her, right? I think my man is trying to prove something in some odd way to her. You know what I mean? Like, but she's been she been tearing that man down on the internet and all kinds of stuff, and I don't know. But I don't think the memes are funny. I really don't. I don't think that the I don't think any of it is funny. I think it's a lose-lose. It was a lose-lose situation. It is a lose-lose situation, even though Chris Rock is selling out, you know, his shows and doing all that kind of stuff. I still feel like it was a lose-lose situation. So anyway, guys, look, I'm going to leave the podcast here. I kind of just been rambling on. I gave you a little gem, uh, a couple of little gems. Um, this is a new tryout thing I'm doing with some visuals. Um, I'm going to put the short version of the podcast that the Will Smith, the initial reaction, that's going to be a short call initial reaction. <laughs> and then it'll be this episode right here. Um, I'm working on a couple. I actually had two episodes recorded. I got to re-record them because I got a little too emotional on one of them. And, um, and I don't know that I'm ready to. I need to, I, I, I can't release that. So I'm going to re-record them and, and hopefully I'll have them up in the next, you know, by Monday of, of this coming week. But the good news is next month I'm out of work. I'm out of work. Like for, I'm, I'm on summer break. So over summer break, I'm going to just be hitting uh, episode, 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 episode. But anyway, hopefully everybody watching on YouTube, hopefully you like the visuals. Please follow us on Instagram at 10 Second Gems. The hashtag is 10 Second Gems Podcast and 10 Second Gems. Guys, please follow us on YouTube at 10 Second Gems. Uh, you can find us everywhere at 10 Second Gems. All right? um, oh, check this out. So, um, also... Also on Spotify, if you go to the little, if you go to, if you click on the, the logo or whatever, it'll take you to the channel. There's a little thing at the bottom where you can support the channel. So if you would like to support the channel, click on that little support the channel I, um, uh, icon or label and it'll take you to the cash app. Uh, I've already had people donate money to, to keep the, the streaming paid for on the podcast. And listen, I really appreciate that. But anyway, guys. The episodes are free. I'm not asking you for money. I'm just saying if you want to support. All right, guys. So listen, take care of each other. See you soon, guys. I'm out.